We are back at it with the LS B2200. So last time you saw, we pulled the 6.2 out of the Escalade and we were able to come over and kind of test fit and drop the motor into the engine bay on the B2200. Now in particular, I want to set the ground rules here. If you're watching this and try to figure out how to do this yourself or at least just for some kind of reference, it's important to note this is an L92 of an 07 Escalade. The L92 has a truck pan and truck accessories, so the furthest space of accessories. But another thing to keep in mind is this motor came with VVT. That means the water pump is designed to go around the VVT timing cover. It's different than a traditional LS. Um, it sticks out more. So you're kind of more limited when it comes to what accessory stacks that you want to run. Now, something that might help you with that is keeping in mind that the truck accessories are going to be out there. And really, the Corvette spacing is going to be in the back here. So you're saving about an inch and a half if you go to Corvette accessories versus truck accessories. But with that, I'd kind of like to give you a couple caveats, right, just off the bat. So one is you can see that the front frame here, if you're, if you're able to bring the accessory stack back to the Corvette spacing, you're still going to have this issue where the power steering lines as well as the, the crank pulley itself is going to be down below the plane of the front frame or the, you'll have the ability to put it down below the frame. It's really not necessarily what you want to have. Um, if a belt comes off or something goes wrong like that, that would be pretty difficult to get in there and put the belt back on. So traditionally, we'd like to have this kind of floated up so that we can get the angle that we're looking for, as well as have the ability to work on and maintenance it if something were to happen with the belts. Now, I kind of want to move the conversation from accessories uh to the radiator setup because there's going to be there's going to be some challenges here and this is to be expected with this kind of truck so what you're seeing right now is the stock b2200 ac condenser and you can kind of see it has a little bit of an extension here like a little offset that keeps it out of this space now there's about two to three inches i think to the grill um i believe this is 17 by 15 or something or 13 17 by 13 i think and this is kind of you know, in the stock form, it's raked from the bottom up to, you know, about a half inch in here for the um, the front radiator support. Now, back here, we've got about a half inch of clearance to the head and the firewall. Um, kind of depends on how you look at it. It's about an inch. You can see it back there to the block and the head. Um, and you can see that our block, the intake plane, is about, I would say, a quarter inch above the uh, the tunnel. Now, here's the thing. What I want from this build is I want this to be relatively dailyable. I want this to be a pretty normal truck. So I want the AC and I want the heat if I can keep everything set up that way. That means I need to keep the AC condenser and I need to find a way to run it. It means I need to get heater hoses to the uh, heater core in the truck. One other thing I'm trying to maintain is I'm trying to make it so that the motor mounts can bolt onto the stock Mazda mount here the stock rubber pad with that i got another i got new set here now i've seen a lot of people say these things might bust off which is entirely possible um i mean it would suck but i kind of want to try it because i mean they're motor mounts they would have i imagine high rated bolts even if it was for the 2.2 um then, yeah there's a torque factor there but i mean it, it it should do the job i mean it shouldn't just completely rip out fingers crossed but that's the point of my design so i, I want to design a mount that's going to bolt on to the uh ls four mount points there the bolt bolt holes and then it would come down and, and it would have full contact on that pad so it'd make like three and a half inches by one and a half 1.75 something like that and if we could do that then this would be a really easy fab to sell kit for dropping in an ls and a b2200 so uh, I'm, I'm excited to try to work on that because that that would work really well i'd be very happy if we could come out with that just to make this easier for people to do and it doesn't have to come with the whole cut all these mounts out and then fab and weld them back in so with all of that said right now with the motor sitting where it's at providing enough clearance to make those bolt-in mounts hopefully enough clearance for the transmission bell housing back here and then running truck accessories this is kind of what we're left to what left with up at the front we're left with about two inches from the end of the pulley here from the nub of the pulley to the existing location of the condenser um the belts themselves are about four to five inches depending on where you're at in terms of of running them and once again that's based on this stock position so what i'm thinking is let me see if i can show you this here 
This AC condenser has a couple just bolt on. It's like a self tapper, but they have a couple brackets and you can see there's a bracket up here and a bracket down here. I think I want to start with trying to cut those brackets so I can push the AC condenser up against the grill as far as possible. Now, when I say as far as possible, you can see there's about two and a half inches of clearance to the grill here. Even at the front, there's about two and a half. You can see that right there. So hoping to get this moved forward, which will gain us space. Cause like I said, it's raked back down at the bottom. We have about five to six inches. And then up top here, we're only looking at about, you know, four to three, depending on how you look at it. So that should be possible. Move this AC condenser forward. There's no point in using anything different. Like if I want to use AC, I'm just going to use the stock AC condenser. Um, and then let's get the radiator size. Cause that's, that's proving to be a little bit of the challenge here which, um, you know, on the D21, when we did the LS swap, really when we did the small block Chevy swap, we just cut the freaking cross member out. We didn't want an AC condenser, any of that. We weren't running AC. So it was pretty simple. You just kind of put the radiator up there. With this one, because we want to keep the AC condenser, there's a couple, a couple of things we have to keep in mind when it comes to the radiator. The first is the hood latch, which frames right through a vertical section that kind of runs along this, uh, runs along this AC condenser. So... Let's see if we can kind of come around here. If you look through there, it's hard to see, but we have a section right there. So not a huge deal. Probably just have to cut that out. So we can move that forward, maybe frame it up or just bend it, add some material to it, re-weld it in. Next up is radiator. And so you have these frame rails down here, right? Like go out to the bumper. Uh, they're on both sides. And then you kind of have just some other stuff that we don't necessarily want to have to mess with. So roughly looking at 25 inches max radiator size, um, probably could go to like 25 and a half, but that's the peak size we could do. So that's for width. As far as the radiator height, our max is somewhere around 19, depending if we're going all the way down to the frame. Uh, you know, we're still looking at kind of, kind of running that 19 number. So I think 19 is a pretty decent number to run with. So to reiterate, in stock format, keeping the AC stuff where it is and all that, all the stuff for the bumper where it is, you're looking at a 19 tall by 25 wide radiator. That's max sizing, okay? Uh, core size is obviously going to be smaller than that, but you'd prefer the core size be close to 19. Uh, and then the, the width, I mean, roughly, if you can pull like 22 out, that'd probably be good for the core width. But the tough part here is the fans so this condenser is about an inch wide so if you take an inch wide plus an inch of radiator you're talking you know a peak of three inches right that your stack's going to be your radiator's probably going to be two inches wide a little bit more so if you if you look at that and you had this right up against the grill if we said three inches um you know we'd be kind of inside of see if you can sort of see where that is we're about four to the inside of the uh this cross here this core support cross so we have like four inches to work with now four inches to work with if we were using that would leave us about literally a peak of three and a half inches to the motor or to the pulleys roughly maybe three and then that's kind of discounting the water pump one right we're not going to really be able to have anything in the center there so like that at best you might be able to run a very slim pair of like 10 inch fans um, and I'm kind of basing that off of the center line here. If you had five inches either way, you could kind of tuck it in there. You know, two 10 inch fans and they would be like the, the fan motors would be like right in here and like right in there and it would be tight. Those things are usually like three inches deep at the fan and then, uh, or at the uh, motor, and then like an inch and a half at the fan. So I think you could do it if you can get the radiator to tuck up in underneath. Okay, now the next thing we're going to talk about is the oil pan, because the oil pan is going to be one of the number one conversations that comes up here. Once again, specifically through the L92, the 6.2 out of the Escalade, this thing has a 3.622 inch stroke on it, so you have to keep that in mind for the oil pan. But if you're putting it in any other LS engine, you need to look up your stroke, and that's going to define what kind of oil pan you can go with. Now, literally, I'm just going to put some pictures up on screen here because they're going to work better for this topic than me underneath there trying to get the shot that I want as I'm huffing and puffing. So basically, I'm going to talk it out here. 
if you can look at these pictures, you're going to see that the oil pan, the truck pan, um, fits fairly well. And the truck pan is going to be incredibly similar to a Holley 302-1 swap pan in terms of the forward two-thirds of length. In fact, the truck pan, I think, is almost identical dimensionally, except for having a deeper well. Uh, the deeper well is also kind of concerning. I was looking at it. It's about three and a half, three inches lower than the cross member uh, traditionally on this truck. So, I mean, it would be it would be down there quite well. You get to lowering it, there's probably a pretty big concern of hitting the pan. So, the next battle kind of comes in if you look at the 302-2 and then the 302-3. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you some pictures here. I've got this laid out in CAD based off the measurements where the motor is. Everything is still in the same spot. I kind of took a measurement on the stock pan. And you can see that the 302-2 is fairly well uh, clearanced for the number one problem, which I'll show you here. So if you're looking at this, this is the number one problem. So everything else relatively clears on the pan except for the steering link. The steering link is going to do some stuff as it moves. And so right now with the stock pan, it's like maybe an eighth inch off that steering link. Uh, so I could technically come a little lower. And I, at first I was going to section and re-weld the steering link, but I kind of realized that that would put the motor so low that it would be like under the front frame rail, all that stuff. I didn't really want to do that. So the 302 three pan has kind of this 30 degree shelf that happens. And it's like right in the perfect spot, provides enough clearance forward and back and then the height wise it provides the most kind of like spectrum of clearance so i think that's what i would recommend going with uh whatever ls you're going to go with i think that's rated for a four inch max um depth for the for the stroke so that should work pretty well so that's what i'm going to go with and you can get these things on amazon just to chat just to add to the list right because we're going to officially track this thing as we go as painful as it might be Officially, the first purchase for LS swapping into the B2200 here is going to be the 3023 Pan, the Amazon special version of it, which I spent $130 on. So right now, we've gone up $130 on the cost of this build. And I think that's required. I don't think you're going to get away from it. You're way too close to that steering link if you do not go to a different pan. Now, the next thing is after a ton of debating, kind of going back and forth on this, I was really kind of wrenching my head around this. I think I've decided to go with an AR5 for the uh, 6200 build. Originally, I wanted to go 4L80. It's a pretty big transmission, but I think we could have made it fit. As I started kind of watching stuff and, and thinking about what I want to use this truck for, uh, this thing, I mean, it's not going to tow a bunch of stuff. I have a dream that one day there's going to be a picture of this truck with a Mazda on the trailer behind it. And I think we can accomplish that with the AR5. And besides that point, I, you know, this thing is intended to be an NA build. At most, this would go NA to E85. Um, I don't want this to be you know, a 700 horsepower turbo build. Um, I kind of want this to run right around that four to 500. The 2,800 pound truck extended cab is not really super suited, right? It's not like I went for a single cab short box. So uh, that's kind of the goal for this thing, right? I want it to be fun as hell. I, I just want it to be fun and to be able to go out and drive this thing you can teach my wife to drive it uh the 4l80 would have been pretty nasty but the thing with the 4l80 is like with a truck this light you're gonna roast the tires on downshifts on the highway like things like that just drivability kind of gets a little weird and i think it'd be just better to have it be an engaged drive so what that means all of that kind of sums up to is i need to now go to the junkyard and i need to find a 4l60 uh bell housing and i've got to uh find a colorado ar5 somewhere uh should be fairly easy a lot of ar5s in there it is soaking wet right now though so i can't do it today um but really can't move any further with the fitment of the engine until i've got that bell housing on there and uh we see where that's going to put the transmission so got to do that you're gonna have to get the fabot adapter kit now that fabot adapter kit i am gonna add in here a little bit later what the overall price of that's going to be it's going to be a fairly pricey point on this build um but we'll add it in there just to add up the tally. And guys, I know that was just like 15 minutes of rambling, but here's the thing. You know, I want this to be as informative as possible. That's kind of how I try to do all these YouTube videos on the build series. So I figured I'd do this and get this out of the way, and then we could jump into putting the parts on. I already have that oil pan on the way. I've already got a bell housing on the way uh, and stuff for the motor mounts. So the next video, we'll be tackling that and getting the motor mounted in. But uh, for now, I figured I'd just get you all the information that kind of led to those decisions. And uh, 
just big big old information dump right there so stay tuned for that next one in we're gonna be putting everything in there and uh, hopefully getting this motor mounted